This will probably be a short video. I'm just going to go through uh, two quick problems here. Page 508, uh, number 11.7. Number 7, top of page 508. In the study of violent crime rates, if both the region and the residual variable had no effect on the rates, how would the rates compare across the states? <laughs> all right, so if, there, if, if only... Let, let me break that question down in a couple of pieces. If the... Um, region had all effects. If the region had all effects, in other words, all effects can be attributed on the violent crime rate by region, then what would R be? R would be 1. It would be a perfect relationship. In other words, if the region of the country um, had all the effects of the violent crime rate, then um, each region would have a, every state would have the same violent crime rate, but the regions would differ, wouldn't they? So that would be a perfect relationship. If the residual variable, or residual variables, had all the effects, and the region had nothing to do with it whatsoever, then R would be zero. In other words, there would be no relationship between um, region and, um, and the national average on um, violent crime rates. All right, so that would be the other extreme. Now this question, 11.7, was with both those, if neither one has an effect, then if neither one has an effect, that means that every state will have the same crime rate. So if every crime, every state had a crime rate of 460 per 100,000 in the population, then there would be no differences between the states, there would be no differences by region, so there would be no residual effects, there would be no uh, you know, categorical variable or independent variables uh, effects. And so uh, what would R be equal to? Uh, I, I don't know. I suspect it's, you might be dividing zero by zero. I haven't really thought about that. That's, a, that's an interesting question. What would R equal to in that case? I don't think we would ever see that in any example. I guess we could uh, try to contrive in such an example, see what happens. But um, if you think about it, if the uh, sum of squares is zero for each one, then the proportion would be zero divided by zero, which is uh, called indeterminate form. You can't calculate the zero divided by zero. So it would be a bizarre circumstance uh, it, under the number seven here if, if um, neither region nor um, residual variable had any effects. So, kind of a strange, but interesting question, I thought. Okay, what's the other one I saw? Number 11, uh, on the same page. If the independent variable has six values, what, which means that we are working with six groups, then how many degrees of freedom does the independent variable have? All right, well, it's going to be one less. Kind of a rule of thumb for this chapter is one less. And so there's going to be six groups, there'll be five degrees of freedom is what you use. And that's the numerator degrees of freedom in the F ratio table. So one less than the number of groups or categories would be um, the answer. Part B, how many degrees of freedom does the residual variable have if there are 50 observations in the sample? divided into six groups. All right, well, if n was equal to 50, and the total sum of squares degree of freedom will be 49. And the independent variable sum of squares is going to be one less than the number of, of groups. Six groups means five degrees of freedom. That's supposed to look like a five. I, know, I, I realize my five sometimes look like S's. There we go. And then the residual sum of squares have to add up to the total with the independent variable, so this would be 44. So 44 would be the answer on that, that problem there. Um, I, I, I guess you could also take the total 50 and subtract the six groups. 50 minus 6 would be 44. I guess that would work also. But it's really not 50 minus 6, it's really 49 minus 5. 
Um, it just happens to come out to the same number. So, anyway, those are um, those are two two quick problems. So I'm going to uh, start a new video on a longer problem.